Hello everybody, good morning from South Australia. As you jump on this morning, please say hi, let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. Uh, we have uh, moved to a new house, so we've had to uh, like learn internet and everything here. So please, um, as you jump on, just let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. I'm just gonna make sure that this is set uh, to public because I know some of you have been saying that when I come on live it's set to private we don't know how that's happening but let me just set this to uh, public okay I think we are good hello everyone good morning good morning yes you can hear me awesome it's great to see everybody hi hi well let us know where you're uh, tuning in from hey from virginia arkansas canada oh so good to see everyone love the painting behind me yes this is one of my favorites which way do i move this way <laughs> yes one of my favorites oh hello everyone so wonderful to see everyone hey reese good to see you um when you're on stream yard you have to have it as public awesome thank you <laughs> i am learning how to work all this internet, stream yard, amazing technology. I'm getting there slowly. <laughs> anyway, it's so good to see everybody this morning. As I always say, I could sit here for the next half an hour and just say hi to everybody. Um, but I am just really excited about this broadcast this morning. Not only uh, is my beautiful guest that I'm about to bring on uh, someone that is super, super dear to my heart, but just such an amazing woman that the Lord is using so powerfully um, in the kingdom and in the earth. So I'm really excited. So get ready, my friends, for uh, what the Lord is about to do. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my lovely friend, Catherine Renala. Hello, Frida. Hey. It's so nice to be with you this morning. Oh. I miss you. Oh, I, I miss you, you too. Miss Virtual you. hugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank God for technology, hey? Amen. We can still Amen. do this. Oh, well, thank you for jumping on. I know this is going to be really powerful. It's it will be, be lovely to, to talk with you because I love hearing what the Holy Spirit's saying. And I tell you, you spark me. And um, it's always lovely to have a conversation and to be with people around the world. Yeah, it's amazing. Look, like Netherlands and Texas. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's just, yeah, what a gift the Internet is. Hey, it's so good. Yeah, hallelujah. Yay. Well, guys, for those of you, I know that everybody watching will be like, I follow Catherine and I'm so um, familiar with her ministry. But for those of you that... Um, might jump on and, and have seen Catherine for the first time, you're going to be so blessed. Um, Catherine is not only uh, the senior leader of the Glory City Church in Brisbane and the Glory City Network, she runs the Australian Prophetic Council and uh, is an author and a speaker and she's just amazing in, in every way. But do you know what I really love about you, Catherine, is that you're a friend of God. That's Aww. like, like that's this. A, so much that's a lovely thing to say. I Aww. am here. Oh, yeah. Thank God he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I love everything about you. But yeah, I just love that your heart for him and your purity and the way that you listen to him. And, you know, you know me, I'm big on how, you know, we steward the heart of the Lord and the revelation of the Lord. And you just do that beautifully. So I am so honored to have you with me this morning. It's going to be awesome. Oh, thank you, Lana. Well, I feel the same way and there's always such a purity and a passion and a divine focus. You have dove, dove's eyes, my darling, the oh, Lord would say, you know. Yes. I love that. Doves have um, no peripheral vision. They're just always looking yes. at, at what they're focused on and, yeah, so it's a joy. Thank you. Well, can we just dive in? Guys, I invited Catherine to jump on this morning because I've happened um, to be able to catch a few of uh, Catherine's, um, you know, like her preaching at Glory City. And I think I've seen a few of your Facebook lives recently. And I was just really stirred by what you were sharing. I was like, wow, this is so a word for right now for what the Lord is saying. And just to encourage people in this like crazy season that we're mm -hmm. in. Um, so how about we just start, like, do you want to just start sharing, like, what's the Holy Spirit kind of been bubbling um, in your spirit lately and in your heart? Well, I, we're in actually a really exciting moment. I, I know it's been so difficult. I, I've been singing the, um, an old um, chorus. It just, 
out of the blue, I just started singing a song from um, the musical Annie uh, that I watched when I was a oh, kid. And that. at the end, they've got the big finale. And, and um, at one point, Daddy Warbuck says, oh, oh, no, Annie says to him, yesterday was plain awful. Oh, yes. And he says, you can say that again. And she yes. says, yesterday was plain awful, but that's not now, that's then. And, you know, I really felt the Holy Spirit just telling us it's time to, to recognize that we are not to be prisoners of the past, but we are to be prisoners of hope who move forward and to press on. So I've been looking at um, particularly Philippians 3, which is just so beautiful. Yeah. And um, Philippians 3.13, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I really believe that we've come, just as we've crossed over into a new year with Rosh Hashanah um, and the Feast of Tabernacles, it's, it's a springtime here in Australia. And in the natural, you could say, well, okay, well, it's a new thing. It's a new day and a new era as you've just uh, um, released your book, A New Era. It was a delight to, uh, to, to read that. Um, but, it, but it really is. There isn't, it's not just a new season. It's not just something new. Something glorious is happening. And um, one of our uh, prophets at church released this word the other night that really resonated with my spirit. And, and it's from the book of Habakkuk, um, chapter 1, verse 5. It says, look among the nations, observe, be astonished, wonder, because I'm doing something in your days you would not believe if you were told. Yeah. And, you know, I really get this sense that the Holy Spirit is wanting us to make room in our hearts to receive exceedingly abundantly above all he we could ask hope or imagine mm -hmm. now i know when people hear that though they go oh yeah yeah i know that mm -hmm. i know god wants to prosper us and give us hope in a future and blah 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 i know it but here's my situation but i i really feel such a strong word from the lord right now that that he is wanting us to very intentionally forget what lies behind to stop allowing the enemy to, to cause us to live in regret and, um, and cluttering up our, our brain space and our hearts because God wants to take us into a season of supernatural acceleration and blessing. And I, I don't often speak about this, but you know that song, The Blessings, gone all over the world, yeah. the number six. God is trying to get our attention. There is blessing that he wants to release into our lives because he wants to do something in our time that would not be believed if it were told. And um, I, I was just saying with Lana um, just before that today is the 5th of the 10th, 20th. So double, double, double for yes. our former shame, pain and disgrace. God wants to release double. And, you know, I, I've just got this sense that the Holy Spirit is so wanting to grab a hold of our attention, cause us to, to wake up and shake off the dust and to be really intentional to, to not allow the enemy to continually sow fear yes. and, and worry and regret into our hearts so that he occupies the space that God wants to fill. It's that Isaiah 54, stretch out your tent pegs, enlarge the place of your dwelling. Shout, sing aloud, you are you barren who've not born. But we need to make room in our hearts, in our in our expectation yeah. and, and resist the devil. Really put your hand up and say, I'm not going there, devil. Yesterday was plain awful, yes. But I'm not gonna think about that again. I'm not gonna allow him to re traumatize me all over again. Yeah, that's really good. And you know, it reminds me, um, gosh, it was probably like nearly two months ago now sitting with the Lord and I just said to him Lord what's on your heart today God like what do you want to say and all of a sudden I was taken into this encounter and I think it's um in Proverbs 4 23 it talks about guard your heart with all vigilance mm -hmm. and the Lord said to me you know right now he's like I am calling my people to be and you use that word like intentional 
in guarding our hearts from all of the stuff that the enemy is trying to bring in like into our minds and you know the distraction and you know like people have walked through yeah horrible stuff in in this year um but i like you have this like excitement in my spirit that and and i know people are going to go yeah i know that but no no no, it's really a reality like Mm, we are mm. seated in heavenly places right like we don't live by our natural circumstances like we don't live by um what's going on around us and even this morning like while i was uh, preparing for this and just you know talking to the lord i felt the lord say you know change the narrative like what is the narrative that you're hearing what's the narrative that is going on between your ears like because there is a narrative of the Lord right now that I believe God is speaking about restoration and he's Absolutely. speaking about, you know, deliverance and, um, and you know, the, the increase that he wants to bring to us as his people in this, like, glorious awakening. I, I, amen. I, I mean, we've just been looking at the um, advertisements that they're putting up here in Queensland. They've got signs saying, we want you for the Harvest Army because... <gasps> We've got bumper crops up here in Queensland and we haven't got our international backpackers and people coming in because of the border closures. So there's the, the fruit is ready to be picked and we haven't got harvesters. And I, I felt it was really prophetic not on so many levels that, yes, the harvest is ripe, that those that you've been praying for and longing for, for salvation, it's, it's ripe and he's saying pray to the lord of the harvest to send forth the harvesters and he he wants us to go out and receive that but he also i i sense too a sense of harvest the harvest of promises the the overwhelming um coming back of things that have been sown in tears and you know i am looking here at isaiah 43 verse 18 It says, do not call to mind the former things or ponder the things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And I just, I get such a sense that that cast your bread upon the waters and after many days it'll come back. There is a coming back. There is the exceedingly abundantly above that God wants to do in so many areas of our lives, but it is an invitation requiring a response. Mm-hmm. And and a big part of that, um, Lana, I've been feeling and saying the same things, that we must guard our heart. Our heart is our mind, will, and emotions. With all diligence, there's actually a fight going on. Mm-hmm. So when, because I find myself, I, even the other day, I was finding myself, Thinking about something I said to somebody in America, you know, who I love that, oh, that was silly. I shouldn't have said that. It wasn't sinful or bad. It was just, oh, why would I say that? That was, uh, and I was kicking myself all over again, thinking, oh, I shouldn't, oh, that probably, oh, I've probably spoiled that friendship, blah, 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 blah. And I, I, I suddenly realized, hey, you know, this is the enemy desperately trying with whatever he can find in the past to throw it at me, to get me to ponder the things of the past and clutter up my brain with regret. So instead, I had to grab it and go, "Uh -uh, okay, that looks like a mess. That was something that was, you know, that was silly. But Lord, you can make miracles out of messes. So... God, I'm going to sow that in faith that you're going to make it work for good, that you're going to bring a miracle out of that mess. And now, Lord, I'm not going there, devil. No, you can't keep lobbing those things over over the fence into my garden of righteousness, peace and joy. And, yeah. I, and I, I actually put my hand up now as a physical like brain breaker where I just go, I'm going to stop that track here and now. I'm not going there, devil, and I'm going to think about something good. And I'm going to sow the pain, and I'm not going to allow it just to go over in a horrible replay Mm. that just wants to continually distract me, fill my tent with stuff that that needs to be cleaned out in a spring clean, and instead enlarge the place of my dwelling, focus my eyes on what God wants to do, what could double favor and double recompense look like in that situation and increase my anticipation and my intentional praise about what I haven't yet seen come. 
Yeah, that's so good. And it reminds me, you know, that you use that word distraction. And I feel like there is like there's this real battle right now where the enemy's trying to distract. You know, you look at all the things going on in the in the earth alone, you know, in our cities or our nation, you know, and then the stuff that the enemy brings to try and replay in our heads. And just while you were saying that, I, I thought of something um, for a while now, the Lord has been speaking to me about the awakening to the power of his voice and that there is a an awakening right now happening not only i guess to the privilege that it is to hear the voice of god but what does it look like for us to take what he has said right in the word and what does it look like for me to take the rhema word of god and to meditate on that and what happens when i meditate on that like mm. the power that is contained in the word and you know those that um follow me you would have seen on my page this week i I uh, shared a song that has just been released. It was um, Stephanie Gretzinger and Dante. Oh, I can't remember his last name now. But anyway, go and have a look on my page. But it, the song is called uh, His Voice. And it's all this beautiful song about um, the privilege and the power of the voice of the Lord. And so as you were sharing that, I'm like, I really feel like right now there is that call from the Holy Spirit to say, hey, no, that's not, I'm not going there. Like I am intentionally choosing not to repeat that over and over in my head and go down that spiral of, you know, then anxiety and heaviness and all the stuff that comes along with that. But I'm actually choosing to listen to what he's saying. So God, what are you saying about that situation? Like, what are you speaking right now? And and rehearsing the rhema, you know, that he's rehearsing. Yeah, you know? that is oh, so good. Yeah. Rehearsing the rhema instead of listening to the reruns and the replays <laughs> of the of the regrets in the past. It's it's yeah. so true. And when God speaks it to you personally, a rhema word, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's so beautiful. And it comes when you ask. I am yeah. often, off, every day I'm asking the Lord. Yeah. Um but often I'll just I'll be be discouraged over something that's happened or some some persecution or some attack or some difficult circumstance. I'm a, a bit of a sensitive person, so I have to really ask a lot for encouragement, Jesus. And um, and I do. I just bring it to the Lord. I say, please encourage me, Lord, help me. Help, confirm to me what I feel like I hear you saying. I, I need some help today, a little bit of extra help, please, Lord. And I ask him where to read and he'll show me and speak to me. Uh, the other night for me, it was um, Isaiah 42. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Yeah. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, they spring forth. I proclaim them to you. Mm. And just him just really affirming to me, yes, thank you, God. Yeah. Those things in the past have come to pass and they no longer um, are allowed to re-traumatize you all over again. And whatever yeah. it is that the Lord is speaking, I, I feel such breath on that um on Isaiah 61, this arise and shine. I, I was reading it again in Nehemiah, arise and build. And then, um, you know, ask, hearing the Holy Spirit saying, come on, I want to do what you have, what, what, what has not even been told in your time. Mm. But it's, it's so important, I think, right now, because so many people have been living in a cycle of disappointment and discouragement. Mm -hmm. um, it's been it's been a, it's been an, an awful time for so many people, mm -hmm. and they they could say yes, it, it's been plain awful. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that the, the Word of God promises that He makes all things work for good, mm -hmm. and if you can make a choice to go, okay, but that's not now, that's then. The former things have come to pass. Maybe, okay, the, the circumstances are still not ideal, but instead, like Isaiah 54, I'm going to start mm -hmm. to sing. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to enlarge my tent. I'm going to enlarge my expectation. I'm going to move out anything that's cluttering my head with condemnation and fear, stealing my confidence. Because if, I, if I'm holding on to condemnation, then I have no confidence to truly believe that God wants to do something unprecedented in my days. Mm -hmm. I, I, I lack the confidence to be able to 
have a joyful anticipation of an exceedingly abundantly above because my heart somewhere deep in my heart there's a little corner of the tent that says yeah but you haven't really earned it you haven't done you know you're not really there yet and if you buy into that that sort of um lie what happens is that you'll never be good enough you'll never measure up um because that's the that's the gospel jesus jesus the only one who could measure up died so that we could reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin and alive to god in christ receiving his mercy hallelujah that's yeah and that's beautiful and it reminds me of um i think it's on a song of songs that talks about you know catch the troubling foxes that will mm-hmm. come to raid your vineyard and you know i've always found that passage really interesting because it doesn't say um it doesn't say like i the lord will come in and do it all for you like the lord actually asks a question right he's like mm. will you let's do it together yeah and the then he's like, i love we'll it do it together and i'm like oh yeah. and that's always struck me because I have a responsibility to look after my vineyard, you know, like Mm. nobody else can do it for me. So I have to tend that place of, you know, that intimacy, that relationship I have with the Lord. So if I'm recognizing one of those foxes coming in to spoil uh, the vine and to spoil the fruit, I want to grab that fox and go, Mm -hmm. no, you know, that's not in line with the word. That's not what my, my God says about me you know, or if there's compromise, like whatever it is. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, I, I was thinking this week, you know, the Lord's releasing words like this, I think to align us and to strengthen mm. us and to fortify us. But I think also like it's unto something so we can carry what's coming. You That's know, it. Like we it's so, to... it's so true. But what I, I'm, I, I love that because it is, all of this is very invitational. We have, a, we have a choice. We can tolerate this stuff and we can live in compromise and we can live in condemnation. We can have a, um, you know, a, a, a cluttered up heart and a cluttered up mind and live with frustration and limitation. Or we can make a choice to say, no, that's enough not going there devil in the name of jesus father i thank you i'm guarding my heart today i'm not going there devil i'm going to think on things that i'm going to forget what lies behind i'm going to press on to what lies ahead hallelujah and when paul wrote that he was he was talking about you know i I haven't i haven't been doing as well as i could have but Forgetting what lies behind, I'm going to press on because the hope of the high calling is that I've been called to live like him yes. and I have hope and a future. And uh, so it's not a passive thing or even just a, a positional thing where I go, oh, good, I'm all right. Yeah. Uh, it's an invitation to press in and get get even more focused on the glory of God. And I've had such an awe and a sense of, I've been using the word, terrifying um, glory, where um, he wants to release things to people. He wants to, there, there, are, there are things that God wants to do, long-held promises that God wants to release to people. But, you know, even one of these things, I was just um, praying and I did what I thought was right. I, I started claiming it. Thank you, Lord. It's mine. Um, something that you know, a building that we are looking for. And I heard the Lord say, no, it's mine. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, it is, God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And this is this is terrifying awe of, <gasps> but he says, would you like, would you like to, to <laughs> Uh, would you like to use that? Would you, would you like, like, yeah, it's good. that would be good. And, um, and I just really believe the Holy Spirit is wanting to remind us that, whoa, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And wow, God, yes, you're God. And it's a, it's a holy readjustment in our, yes. our thinking that like, whoa, but his, his smile of a father is, Yes. Is is so he is so for us, and he is so desiring to do beyond what we can even emotionally, spiritually, yes. mentally comprehend. Yeah. But it comes with us terrifying glory. <laughs>